Hi guys, Dennis here. In this video, let's go through a quick overview of Couchbase Capella, break down some of its most important concepts, and show you how to connect it to a simple application running on your machine. Let's get started. I will assume that you already signed up for Capella. If not, please go to the link down below, cloud.couchbase.com slash signup. Before we start, it is important to highlight that Couchbase is a distributed database. That means that you can definitely start with just a single node, which is what we have in the view trial, but it really shines when you need to scale to 3, 5, 10, or 20 nodes. That is why we call each database server a cluster as it may contain one or more nodes in it. Okay, once you log into Capella, you'll probably see a screen similar to this one. Everything that we talk about during this video will be described here under documentation. To create a new Couchbase instance, let's go to Cluster, then Create Cluster. You will notice that we are back to the home page, but this is because we are in a try account. Once you sign up for a paid one, you will see more options here. But for now, let's create our cluster by clicking on Deploy Now. It will take a few minutes to get your cluster ready. You can check the status here in the cluster menu. Once the setup finishes, you can click on the name of the cluster to access it. We will deep dive into some of those menus in another video, but for now, let's go through just the most important ones. Under the Nodes menu, you can see that our cluster has just a single node so far, and it is running uh, query, data, index, and search. Couchbase is modular, so you can pick and scale just the services that you need. In our case, we are not running analytics and eventing services. I will link to a video in the card explaining each one of the services. Under buckets, we have already by default a demo bucket called travel sample, with some data that we can use to run some queries. If you are familiar with buckets, scopes, and collections, feel free to skip to the next session. If you are new to those concepts, here's a table that will help you. If we compare Couchbase with a relational database, a server would be similar to a cluster, a database would be similar to a bucket, a schema similar to a scope, and a table to a collection. For instance, the travel sample bucket that we just saw has the following structure. Under this bucket, we have a default scope called underscore default another called inventory, and tenant agent 00204. Inside the inventory scope, we have five collections called landmark, hotel, airport, airline, and route. Going back to Capella, we can click on more options here to see the scopes and collections. Let's pick scopes, where you can see, believe it or not, the scopes of this bucket, now, if we click on the collections count, we can see the existing collections inside this scope. Finally, if we click on documents, we can see the documents inside the collection. This is similar to seeing uh, the rows in a table. But you don't need to go all the way here just to see the documents of a collections. Under tools, there is an option called query workbench. On this screen, you can write SQL++ queries, which are like SQL on steroids. How cool is that, guys? For instance, let's say we need to select hotels in France using the travel sample bucket. We could write something like select star from travel sample. Uh, we need to escape travel sample because of the dash here. Here. Uh, dot inventory dot hotel where country equals to France, right? Pretty simple, right? And let's limit that to 10 results. So hit execute. And here they are, the hotels, the all based in France. Now uh, we could do something uh, to make our query simpl simpler here. So if we select the bucket and the scope inventory, we could just write something like select star from hotel where country uh, equals to France and it will have the same effect. Cool, let's go back to buckets and create a new one by clicking on create new buckets. 
uh, let's give the name uh, user profile and then click on next. Here we can specify the memory quota of our buckets. For now, let's specify 500 megabytes. I will link to a page explaining how to properly size your cluster and buckets in the video description. Let's click next and finally create bucket. Before we connect our app to our bucket, we still need to do two things. Add our IP address to the Capella Alloyed list and create the credentials to access our database. Let's do that now. On the connect tab, uh, you can see the host name that our application needs to connect to. And if we click on manage allowed IPs and add allowed IP, here I want to add a permanent one. So click on add my IP and add IP. Then let's go back and here we can click on manage credentials. In this screen, we'll add the username and password that we will use to access the database. Uh, so click on uh, create database credentials. Here I will specify my user and on the password, yeah, this this some password here. Let's pick uh, all buckets, okay, all scopes and read and write and hit create. Awesome. Now comes the fun part. Let's connect our app running locally to our cluster. To speed up the things a little bit, let's go to github.com slash couchbase-examples. This is a place that contains many getting started with Couchbase. As I'm a Java guy, I will probably pick the Java Spring Boot Quick Start. And this project has the explanation step by step of how it was built here on the developer portal. So I won't get too much uh, uh, into details. But let's clone this project. So I will uh, cop the URL here and then Let's go back to uh, the console and hit clone uh, to clone this repository. Cool. Let's open now this project on IntelliJ. Let's now expand our project. Click on source, main, uh, Java, configs, and click on Couchbase config. This class shows you how to connect with Couchbase, but by default, it is reconfigured to connect with the Couchbase instance running locally. As we want to connect with Capella, let's comment this method and uncomment this method here. We are committing a small crime here because we are ignoring uh, invalid certificates. For development, it's okay to do that, but please don't do it in production. I'm cheating here just to make things easier for you. Now let's go to resources, application.properties and add here our user profile. Our bucket name is user profile. Our username is my user. Our password is some password. And we can go back to Capella here on connect and grab the host name here. Great. Now, if we click on application, we can run our application here. Just right click, run application. When the application starts, let's go to localhost 8080 and you will see this beautiful swagger interface here. We can expand the profile controller and add a new user here. So we click on try it out. And here on an email, I will add dennis.rosa at couchbase.com. Then first name, Dennis, last name, Rosa and password, secret. Okay, so we hit execute and we just added our user to the database. The way this application works is actually quite simple. If we go back to IntelliJ and click on profile controller here, you will see that we just receive whatever you send from the front end and then we insert this in a collection called uh, profile, which means that if we come back here to Capella 
and on the query workbench and run select star from profile and hit execute, you will see the document that we just added. Yeah, we just completed the basics. Good job. There are just two quick things left that I would like to teach you before we go. The first is how to add a new entity. And the second is how to import data into the database. To add an entity, let's go to buckets and then here click collections and then create collection. Let's call it product. And yeah, here we are already using the default, which is fine. Our application only used the default scope. So let's hit add. Then let's go back to the query workbench and then add an index for this collection. This is a mandatory step if you want to query the data. To create an index, let's write uh, create primary index on uh, user profile dot uh, default, which is the scope dot product and hit execute. Worth to highlight that in a production environment, you should probably use secondary indexes instead of primary ones. But for now, it is good enough. Also, if you are asking yourself why the creation of the index is not done automatically, well, there is a very good reason for that. Manipulating the document using only the ID is faster and uses internally the key value engine, which does not require any indexes. This works pretty well when you can guess the ID of the document. For instance, say you have a document called user history and the ID of this document will always be the ID of the target user dash hist, like one, two, three dash hist. In this scenario, there is a good chance that when you need to load the user history, you already have the user ID in memory. So instead of querying the database to find the history of the target user, you can directly ask by the user history with the ID 123-hist. If you want to learn more about it, check the sub documents operation video in the card. Let's go back to our application and under models, uh, create a new entity called product. Okay, and then add two attributes called PID and private string name. Awesome. Finally, let's uh, generate the get and setter for those two attributes. Now let's add our controller. So I'll copy this here and call it product controller and give this a product URL. And here, just to keep things simple, let's get rid of all those methods here and just implement the, the save one. So now we will insert a product and we will receive a product here as well. So product, right? Let's get rid of this. Uh, here, create a user. No, we are creating now a product. Cool. And here, when we get a reference to the profile collection, uh, now we want now the product collection. So instead of this, copy and say product. There's a typo here. Product and product. Now we go back here to the product controller and say, hey, give me the product collection. Product. Now we cop product here, which is the ID. We are inserting, so we need to specify the ID and the product. And when we return, we return the same object, right? Awesome. Let's run our app again. And the reason why when we first ran our application, we didn't have to create any indexes or collections is because here under runners, when you click on the basic tab runner, 
we are already creating the, all the collections and scopes that the application need during this startup. Now that our application is live, let's go back to the, the Swagger UI. And here you will see that we have a new option, so product controller. Let's expand this and try it out. So now I'll give a name my new product and ID, let's say test one. If you click here, execute, cool, awesome. We just inserted our product. And if we come back to the workbench and right select star from product, we should see here the products that we just added. Finally, to bring it to a perfect end, let's import some data. So let's go back to our project and here under resources, data set, I have a small uh, data set here, which has uh, 10 users. So you can see here 10 users and one product. This is just a, a JSON list. So you see here we open the list and here we close it. Now let's import it. So we go back to Capella and then go to Tools, Import. Click on Import, then choose the User Profile bucket. Here on File Type, pick JSON and the format type is List. Now let's upload our dataset. Click on next. Here we will select custom collection mapping because our dataset has more than one collection. So let's go back to our dataset here. Just copy one of the documents to test our expression. So here is an example of a document. And on the mapping expression, our expression will be underscore default percentage, my collection name percentage. What this part of the expression is doing is essentially saying that, okay, the collection name will be the value of this my collection name attribute. In this case, will be profile. So here in the bottom, you can see the end result. So this data will be inserted under underscore default scope and in the collection profile. Let's click on next. Our dataset already has IDs, so we don't want to automatically generate them. So let's click on custom generation. And then here, let's paste a document just to test our expression. So what we want to use is to use this attribute here as the ID, right? So all we have to do is to add percentage PID percentage. And here you see that for this document, the ID generated will be 10 because we are picking the attribute PID. Let's click on next and next and finally import. Now it will take a few seconds to import this data set. So let's go back here. But as mine just finished, let's square the data now. So workbench, select star from product. And hopefully we should have two documents here now and let's select profile. Cool, we have 11 documents now. All right, looks like we accomplished a lot in just a single video. You now have enough knowledge to get started with Capella, but if you have any questions, you can ask me and the other folks in the Couchbase forum. I will leave a few other recommended videos here and I hope you had as much fun as I did. See you in the next video.